Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video, well we're going to go back, we're going to look at a case study and we're going to look at a case study which is to do with measurement system analysis. So we're going to do an MSA. I've done these before but uh, this, was a, um, this was a great little case study that's come up. Um, basically measurement system analysis so we're going to take a look it's a it's a little case study it's very simple but very unusual um, and that's the reason why I wanted to show it to you normally when we do these things we do examples we show you tools we show you MSA we always show you the simple version we always show you the straightforward version, the one that works as it was meant to, as it was published. But of course, you learn so much more when a problem comes at you that's not like that. And this is a good example. So we're going to take a look at an MSA, it's a little case study. I got this email just before the weekend. Um, I've sent some answers to the client. But uh, I, as soon as I saw it, I thought, great, great opportunity to do a case study, great opportunity to do a little video and learn some more about MSA for measurable data. So this is measurable data. So let's take a look at the email, first of all, that I received about this particular issue. Okay, so here's the email. Um, I've just pasted it into uh, Word so that you you don't see the client etc but here's the email and it just says look afternoon Paul wonder if you could help me with this MSA that I've done on a moisture reader so just to be clear this company makes they make material they weave material and they give it special finishes so this particular measurement system is checking the moisture as, as a um, a width of material which is probably about two and a half meters two meters wide is going through a machine so if you could help me uh, jog my memory so he's asking a question about first of all do we use the ANOVA method so we'll take a look at that in a second um, and then of course he's got these two measurements so we've got precision to tolerance and precision to total. So he's got these two measurements. So just a reminder, precision to tolerance, precision to total variability. So they're the two measurements that we use. They're the first two statistics that we use to answer the question, is my measurement system any good and of course what we're trying to find out you observe the black distribution what's really there is the blue distribution and the inflation that's caused here well this can only be created by measurement error and we're trying to see that that we're also trying to see that in respect of the tolerance. So if you've got a tolerance here, we'd be saying how big is that compared to the tolerance? We'd be saying how big is that compared to the total? So where I put the black lines, that's the total variability that the measurement system saw. Precision to total, that ratio to that size. And the other one, precision to tolerance, that the ratio is that little bit of error compared to the tolerance that you have. Okay, so they're the two statistics. Now, the reason he sent me the message is because I have a simple rule that I give out, which is basically this. I want precision to tolerance, precision to total, as a guideline to be at point one, which means what? in more practical terms well it means that that ratio is only 10% so this is just 10% of the tolerance 
or this is just 10% of the total variability. Yeah, so you want it to be below 10%. So it's not influencing your results too much. It's not making you misclassify too much. Now that's normally the rule that I give out. So let's go back and have a look at the results that he's getting that he sent me in the email. So as you can see, what he's saying is, his precision to tolerance is 8%, which is great. That's perfectly acceptable. But his precision to total, he's missed a word out there, but his precision to total is 100%. So 100% of all the variability he's seeing seems to be coming from his measurement system, which would tell him that he has a problem. And then he's made a comment then, because he's gone looking for where the problem is, both operators are getting similar sizes of error. So let's take a look at his let's take a look at his numbers. So here's the here's the MSA and here's the numbers. So let's talk about what's going on here and why he's seeing a bad result, but actually I'm about to tell him that he doesn't have a problem. Well, part of his issue is this here, precision to toll. So this is where he's got a bad result. He, he's actually seeing, let's have a look, he's actually seeing 100% of his variability, his precision to toll, only 8% here. So what's he done? What's created this problem? Well, this is a great learning point about how you set this type of MSA up. So one of the things you have to do because you are going to reference the measurement error against the total variability that is in your process, one of the things you have to make sure you do is you have to show the mathematics the total variability. Now if you look back at his results here, you will notice there's very little variability in his results. So he's got five I think he's got five pieces. So he's got five pieces. There's very little variability. They're all at 1.2, basically. Occasionally a result goes to 1.3. Occasionally a result goes to 1.1. But what we've done is we've shown the mathematics. We've shown the MSA almost no variability here. We haven't shown it, this black distribution. Because what he did was he took one part, so he's explained this to me since, he took one part and he just measured in five places down one web of material. Well, if that web of material is being well produced, of course there is no variability, there is no total. So then what does the math say? Well, it says all the differences I can see are coming from the measurement system. So what he's done is this, look. Instead of showing the measurement mathematics, the MSA mathematics, this big black distribution, he's taken just one part. So you could almost say he created a distribution that looks like that as far as the mathematics is concerned. Well, if you look at that error as a proportion of that variability, what are you going to say? Because what you're going to observe, of course, put the measurement error over the top trying to keep these in proportion there's the measurement error added on to the the results well what do you see when you look at that mathematically to be honest what do you see when you look at it pictorially what you actually see is that all the variability see what the maths is seeing it's coming from the measurement error because he showed it now process variability. So one of the important things you've got to do is when you collect your, and normally it would be 10 samples, not five, would be what I would observe or, or what I would suggest, is you make sure that you randomly select. So you randomly select these. You're not deliberately trying to create that distribution, by the way. You just randomly take 10 out of natural process results then what the mathematics will see is a natural spread of the process and then it says, well, how much extra variability am I adding onto the problem? So what he's done, 
he's shown it no variability in the parts therefore this looks terrible because of course the maths the only thing the maths can see is, is variability that's coming from the measurement system and then he tells him that 100% now what I've sent back to him I said look this measurement system is perfectly okay so let me let me go through the logic of why I said this measurement system is perfectly okay so we're going to take a look we're going to take a look at some diagrams now and I'll show you probably the the point of doing an MSA when I wouldn't do an MSA when an MSA would give me a bad result and I wouldn't care because there's times when you get a bad result and it doesn't matter so let's take a look at a diagram that made me say everything's okay okay so th there's the there's the data look and just a little reminder look everything's at 1.2 there's no variability in the parts and bear in mind look at his spec 4 to, to 0.5 so he's got a spec which is three and a half units wide I'm, I'm not sure what these units are by the way it could be percentage um, moisture but he's got a full spec of 3.5 and all we are seeing is parts which are 0.1 difference there's literally no variability in them but anyway so let me show you the diagram that, that um, SPCXL has created here and it's this one look so not this one this one the misclassification the misclassification rate so part of the reason why I told him that this measurement system is perfectly okay is because it's in no danger of making any errors whatsoever given the data that he's given me okay given the data that he's used so let's talk about what this says. Let's go back to the let's go back to the whiteboard and let's have a look at what this is telling us. Okay, so if you look at that diagram, basically that that uh, that distribution goes nowhere near the specs. The specs, by the way, with the red line. So you can see the red lines on this diagram. That's the specification limit. So when you've got this situation, look. Let's let's put specs on here. So let's say you've got specifications here and let's say this is what's really happened so you really do have a lot of measurement error and very little product error so let's get a more reasonable let's get a more reasonable result to think about so let's say you had a result which was um, 0.5 which would be 50 percent 50 percent of all the variability you're seeing it's coming from your measurement system this would be telling you that your measurement system is making your results look twice as variable as they really are yeah so it's making this blue distribution look twice as wide as it really is now if normally you'd say that means your measurement system is no good but look here it's making error in terms of it doesn't quite know where you are so it doesn't know where you are here the error will be moving these results backwards and forwards but if you look at that is it causing you any grief well no if a result landed there for example would that be a good signal that something important is happening to your process would it make you investigate well yes of course it would now would the measurement system do that randomly no it wouldn't do that randomly it would only do that when your process has genuinely moved all the way towards this tolerance so it's not giving you inappropriate signals would it think one of these is a reject when it really isn't a reject in other words would it misclassify no it wouldn't so it's not misclassifying it's not giving you spurious signals it will see a problem if a problem exists in which case this is a measurement system that's perfectly okay and it goes to the heart for me of when MSA is really really needed I know that what you're doing you're doing MSA to follow some rules so you've probably got you know um, things like PPAP to worry about uh, etc so you know new product introduction type processes 
And as part of that, often MSA is built in, maybe your ISO 9000 might call for it, and it's, it's, kind, of, um, it's kind of built in. Um, and of course it gives you the rules, and if you don't pass the rules, you're supposed to do something about it. But the point is this, is it causing you a problem? If, it, if you had this problem, look, there's your tolerance. The black distribution is what you're seeing. But the blue distribution is really what's there. Well, what's that causing you? It's causing you defects that aren't true. So it's causing misclassification problems. That's a problem. The other thing, the other thing it might do is given the amount of error, if you genuinely had a defect here, it could swing the defect inside the tolerance and get you to send that defect to your customer. That's high risk. A measurement error where you have low capability, and this is the point, MSA is really important when you have poor CPK. If you don't have poor CPK, and if we go back and we look at what's on that screen, for example, the distribution there is telling me he doesn't have poor CPK, then, then you would need to consider your MSA and look at these results if they're giving you a problem, because they would be giving you a problem, they'd be giving you defects that aren't really there. But actually he's got such a tight tolerance, such a tight distribution rather, it's not causing him any grief. Well, okay, now you say, he picked the sample wrong. He didn't pick the sample right. Well, if he went back and picked the sample, wouldn't that give him a problem? Well, no, because if he went and chose the sample correctly, of course, what would happen is the total variability would get much bigger. This error wouldn't change. All that would happen is that this calculation would be made with a bigger total. So as the total gets bigger, this number will get smaller, because this error is not changing. So actually, if he goes back, and I've, I've advised him to go back and do the sample again, add a few more different products, not different products, but different batches of the same material, add a few more different batches of the same material, offer a distribution up to the MSA, and then recalculate the statistics, recalculate the precision to tolerance and precision to total. And my expectation is as he gives it more uh, total variability, this number will also come down to where the other number was. So if you remember, the other number was at 8%. Precision to tolerance was at 8%. As he shows it more variability, this number will come down to close to probably 8% and you won't have a problem. So I don't expect this measurement system to actually have a problem and actually it's not giving him any grief. But it's a great learning point. Make sure you offer a proper sample size, but also use your common sense. Is your measurement system giving you any grief? If the answer's no, then react to the MSA results appropriately. Don't give yourself a huge measurement problem when actually it's not causing you a practical problem out in manufacturing. I know that you, you, you're following PPAP and what's the other one? AP, APQP rules and, and there's rules to be followed. That's fine, but let's, let's, keep our, let's keep our head here. The MSA is not giving you a practical problem Therefore, you have time to fix it if you want to, but you might also decide to live with it if you want to. So there's the MSA case study, where actually, even when you break the rules, the measurement system is still okay.